Sometimes we're putting herbicide not on the plant, but we're actually putting it on the ground. And that's going to be shown to you today in the herbicides and what plants. So we use a completely different delivery system for that. When we do that, we use essentially kind of like an automated syringe. There's Humpteen years, we use these little, these are about 12 bucks a piece. Any, uh, this is high pro, when there was a high pro, and they're just simply, uh, you go to the animal health product store, you can buy these, you know, they're semi-disposable, they'll last for a few weeks and things like that, where we have this and we can meter out by cc's, you know, how much herbicide we're gonna put on the ground, those. They do have now better type equipment. It's going to cost you more, three to four times as much, but they're more resistant, last longer if you take minimal care of them. Works real good. Generally, the generic term for these are spot guns that we use, and they'll talk more when they get to those plants. A good source of uh, spray tank come from sheep and goat country are these drench bladders. So we take the product, the herbicide, put it in here, put that on your back, attach a gun to it, and then we've got a system there that's real light out there that we can use and do those soil treatments. Uh, one of the problems you're going to find on these soil treatments is just seeing where you've treated. And you guys have, well usually y'all have grass. You know, we've actually got more grass than y'all got now. Which, but uh, it's hard to see where you treated on the ground. You can take dyes and put in there to help you see that. Or, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting that toilet paper out and go putting a little bit on the trees. It gives people something to talk about when they drive by your pasture. Go out there. Let's see. Any equipment I'm, ah, oh, I see one thing. A couple of things. You know, you got some record keeping uh, requirements. Some of these herbicides. We generally try to use non-restricted use products when we can. But like for prickly pear we recommend surmount that's a restricted use product you guys that are signing that ceu deal over there y'all know you got to keep records right and so those records require temperature wind direction all that kind of stuff so there are there's good equipment out there and it's like this i, I pronounce it kestrel it may not be pronounced it right it's just a little wind meter temperature gauge humidity deal all in one so at least you can get that kind of data. You know, nothing else when the TD inspector comes and visits you, just have it sitting there. Even if you didn't use it, you know, it's sitting there and he thinks you did. But anyway, another thing we use is like saw temp gauge on mesquite. Uh, Bob's going to talk about it in a lot more detail in just a minute or two. It's real important those saw, saw temperatures, knowing when to start spraying. Now you can buy these. 30, 40 bucks, you can find them at that cheap. Or, you know, another option is call your NRCS or your extension offices. A lot of them times those officers are kind of monitoring those soil temps and they can let you know whenever we reach those temperatures where we can spray. Okay. One thing I forgot when I was talking about nozzles before I walked down that other end. Some of these nozzles that we're gonna to recommend to you got little bitty holes. That's an X1. Bob's gonna talk a lot about it here in a minute. How to use that nozzle, how to make the application. That hole, how you know it's the right size, looking at the age of some of you up there like me, whenever I hold that up to the light, I can't see a hole. Okay, pretty small. Now because it's got that little bitty hole in it, you know it's gonna clog up. Common sense. So that's why we put a screen back behind that nozzle. When we take that nozzle off, we'll slip this little screen there. This is not just a screen though, this is also a check valve. And that's as important as that screen. Whenever you have these handguns, this one here is pressurized up. It's got a, a large nozzle on it. But that thing, whenever I'm spraying and I let off, if I got this little nozzle on here, that's still pressurized up to here. So it just keeps spraying, doesn't cut off. 
That's where that little check valve comes in. When that pressure just starts to dip a little bit, it cuts it off. And you're running a real expensive mixture in your backpack, and you're running 15% remedy back there. You don't be wasting it or spraying your feet or anything like that. So a buck and a half, about what these little screen and check valves cost, get those and put them back behind those nozzles. And always put screens back there, if nothing else, behind all of your nozzles. That equipment down on this end, I see a grubbing hoe, lopping shears. Bob is used a lot with the Solo. You know, don't forget, there are mechanical ways to control some of these plants. Uh, may not be the most desirable way, but it's a healthy way. It's the organic way, right? Make you sleep good at night. Remember, most of these plants are going to be crown sprouters at least. So whenever you take the top off a plant, you know it's gonna re-sprout. Almost regardless, there's some exceptions, ash juniper being one, but we, an eastern red cedar we have around here, but whenever you're out there grubbing or whatever, you need to go down deep enough to get that crown area out of the soil to be able to kill those plants, okay? So keep that in mind. Final deal on equipment before I'm going to turn over to Bob. And some of y'all may think of this as a herbicide. I'm going to talk about it as a equipment, these dyes. We add dyes to a lot of our mixes that we use. There's different dyes out there. We've tried a lot of them. I've, I've tried every one I can find. Uh, the reds in general just don't work very well. Some of them are permanent too, they're all soluble. So if you get ammonia, you know, you're gonna have ammonia for a long time. Some of the cheaper dyes, uh, they're like turf dyes. They're about half the price and it takes three times as much of them to get the same strength of that dye that you can see. We really haven't found anything better than like highlight blue dye. I think this here is, a, is a, up in front. There's also, you'll find some of these companies sell that same dye under different names. But that, overall, I haven't found anything that beats that. That's a water-soluble dye. So what that means is that it kind of kind of comes off of you, okay? Kind of. And we're laughing today, you know, we're out here, and luckily none of us are dressed up very good, thank goodness, but we can't mess with this stuff without getting it on you one way or the other. Spill some in your shop and you'll find out how far that dye can go. Uh, you like a smurf. Yeah, you look like a smurf when you get that stuff. You know, a good deal about that, we run some students out at San Angelo a good bit and they're out there by themselves spraying on different projects and they're using the dyes. And when they come back at the end of the day, I can look at those boys and girls and I can tell which one's been working. If they're clean, it's usually the boys are clean, you know, they haven't been working out there. It's, and we have chores and field days, standing like this, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at your feet, I'm looking at your boots, because when I see blue boots, I know that's my brush killers out there. But those dyes are important. I know they're kind of expensive, but the obvious thing is that it tells you which plants you've treated, of course, that makes sense. But you also, it keys you in on the amount of coverage you need, because whenever you kind of paint those plants, and they're going to demonstrate all this, when you kind of paint those plants blue, you know that you've got enough herbicide on there, and you know you're not missing one part of the plant. You got to remember, herbicides don't go sideways in those plants. If I spray this side of a mesquite and don't spray that side, Okay, that side's going to stay alive, and even if I top kill it, those buds are going to sprout from that side. So we need to get uniform coverage, and that's what those dyes do for you.